A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Over the last 20 years, we've witnessed Oscar wins for Latino directors such as Alfonso Cuaron and Guillermo del Toro, while countries like Chile brought home their first ever Academy Award. Though this may seem like a sudden boom for regional filmmakers, Latin American cinema has been making significant contributions to the industry for nearly a century. Today, Film programmer Carlos Gutierrez dives into the history of Latin American cinema and lays out what audiences can do to bolster international film traditions. The first two decades of the new century have witnessed a major cinematic renaissance in Latin America. We know bells for whistle, no dogmas or manifestos. A young and enthusiastic generation of filmmakers are changing drastically how Latin America sees and projects itself in the big screen. And This renaissance has gone hand in hand with the major political shifts of the region as well, um, that has served as a fuel, creative fuel, to challenge uh, notions of politics, cultural, and identity. But where all this talent came from? Why, despite of increase and continuous production for almost two decades, the international uh, uh, gatekeepers of world cinema have largely overlooked the cinema of the region? Why we? as audiences, are not really aware of this amazing cinema. Well, first of all, we have to understand that Latin American cinema didn't start just two decades ago. Um, you might have heard of uh, Brazilian film Central Station or Mexican film like Water for Chocolate. But Latin American cinema started way earlier before. Uh, countries like Brazil, Argentina, Mexico were able to create solid uh, film industries. And then the, 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 the region gave birth to the new Latin American cinema in the 60s, a really uh, strong political movement that grew up from the experience of uh, the Cinema Novo in Brazil, um, the Cuban revolution, um, the, the cinema from, um, from Cuba post-revolution, as well as the documentary school of um, Santa Fe in Argentina, a very uh, committed political cinema. By the 80s, production was pretty much um, uh, at, 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 a, at a record low, um, because it was a horrible uh, decade for Latin America, characterized by dictatorship, civil wars, and a perennial economic crisis. But then, Enter the mid-90s. A young generation from, uh, from filmmakers from Argentina decided very discreetly to break from, free from the, uh, from the previous narratives, the heavy political allegories, and decided to make a more independent, more intimate, more minimal stories. And filmmakers like Lucrecia Martel, Martin Reckman, Lisandro Alonso, Pablo Trapero, and Adrián Catano discreetly paved the way for a younger generation of filmmakers to tell the stories they wanted. Around the same time, um, Gonzalez Iñárritu debuted in Cannes in 2000 with his debut feature, Amores Perros, in the, in the Critics' Week of the Cannes Film Festival. The film got uh, some exposure in the U.S. and really opened the door for the interest for Latin American cinema. Actually, the film also was nominated for Best Foreign Film after uh, 20 years that Mexico hadn't had a nomination. Brazil also contributed to the international visibility of, of this renaissance of Latin American cinema with the fast-paced favela drama City of God, which also was nominated for four Academy Awards. And then Alfonso Cuaron uh, went back to Mexico after directing two films in Hollywood and made uh, the popular Y tu mamá también, starring Gael García Bernal and Mexican actor uh, Diego Luna. So what they did, um, Cuaron, Iñárritu, Mereles, was basically blend those barriers between the art house and the mainstream, seducing both Hollywood and Cannes, and created a global cultural phenomenon. So we have, on one hand, the new Argentinian cinema. On the other hand, we have all this... Uh, these new global authors that really excited a, young, uh, a whole generation. There's three key elements of this renaissance. One is the, is the innovative creation of hybrid models of production. And hybrid, I mean private and public, national and international. And, th and this, uh, this form of production comes basically in three kinds. One, a direct government support. Second, innovative and groundbreaking tax in incentives that has injected a lot of money from private capital. And third, fluid co-production treaties between Latin American countries and Europe. And I think the Latin American model could serve like a really important case study how to reactivate American independent cinema. Uh, I think we have a lot to learn from, from, from Latin American cinema. 
Uh, the second element of this、uh, renaissance has been the diversity. Again, these eclectic models of production have really fueled different kinds of films and narratives and genres. And again, from the independent to the mainstream to a lot of also visual artists, that's, also, that's happening in other parts of the world. And the third part,、uh, which is very important, a key element of this renaissance, also I think, is the political. Uh, as I mentioned, the Latin American cinema was particularly known for chronicling the struggle of the masses, of、um, a lot of rural settings, a search for national identity. The new generation has、uh, break free from,、um, or has enriched rather,、uh, this experience with、uh, chronicling the urban middle class experience. And ironically, it's so much easier right now to have a film career, to claim a film career in Latin America than it is in the U.S. And also. You know, a lot of filmmakers are not interested at all in Hollywood. Also, challenging the idea that Hollywood is the center of film production. The problem is that for all of this artistry, all these accolades, and all this influence, Latin American cinema re remains largely overlooked and underrepresented in the international film in the international film circuits. For one, even though I mentioned that there was a lot of excitement about Lat Latin American cinema in the film festival circuit. There's a very limited number of spots for those for the films in the region in those festivals. Usually, there's like two, three spots per festival. Second, it's a problem of validation as well. Once the films get to the film festival, but sadly, Latin America or what we think of Latin America is still tied to archaic notions of third world, of poverty, of really we're reducing the whole experience of Latin America, a very diverse and and heterodox. Region to really mono, monolithic themes, and for the festivals and for the programmers, if you're not talking about the topics that we think Latin America is again poverty, drug trafficking, immigration, then you're not to you're not Latin American enough,、um, and that also of course affects the the affects、um, the appreciation, and the fact that these films are not fully get, getting fully validated in film festival that also hinders distribution in the U.S. and abroad, so. All of this lack of visibility, lack of attention, also hinders them、uh, distribution opportunities back home. So, as audience members, I urge you, I really want to invite you to discover the amazing world of Latin American cinema. And it's closer than you think, you know. In platforms like Netflix, Amazon, you know, there's a lot of already a lot of films that we don't know exist, but they're at our hand. And also in local film festivals, you know, go out and check the Latin American films. I think you're really for an in surprise. Uh, particularly under this, under the current political context in the U.S., I think more than ever、uh, we need to look south for insight and inspiration. And what a better way to do it than through cinema? Because the present and the future is in the south. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded in Indianapolis, Indiana. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Indianapolis. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosilioni. Thanks for listening, and see you tomorrow.